Breaking news today is the bombardment of Mariupol. The number of casualties is growing. Sergei is covering this topic in Warsaw. Here we have a court trial against opposition activists. Zima will be filming it with journalist Tatiana. Everyone has been asking us, how is it possible? How are you able to make television right under the nose of the KGB, without accreditation, without satellite uplink trucks, always tapped, always tailed? We have paid a high price for this work, more than 70 arrests, searches and written warnings from the prosecutor's office. I myself have been fined twice by the court recently. We have calculated that Belsat journalists have jointly spent 104 days under arrest and paid fines totaling 25.5 million Belarusian rubles. Don't ask me if it has been worth it. Would you give up your freedom without any struggle? The Bielsat TV channel is almost completely made in Belarus. Some Bielsat programs are produced in Poland, Lithuania and the Czech Republic. At Polish Public Television headquarters in Warsaw, we have a studio from which we broadcast live and also the main newsroom. Here we edit received materials and develop programs and from here we have been broadcasting these programs daily via satellite for more than seven years. We've been consistently refused official registration by the Belarusian authorities. The hardest time we have probably gone through was in 2010 after yet another rigged Belarusian presidential election. Six of our people got arrested and there was a literal police siege around us. Despite these obstacles, every day a hundred or so Bielsat collaborators collect materials for broadcasting right there in Belarus. Every day we offer our viewers a three-hour block of live information programming. We air current affairs shows, economic and cultural magazines, a Belarusian language skills improvement guide and a magazine for citizens on how to protect their rights. We have produced more than 150 documentary films and reports. All this can be seen via the satellite and online. Of course, we work and broadcast in Belarusian. It's one of our fundamental principles. There can be no national identity without national language and history. But we are also open on everybody else. Now, the Russian language will continue to dominate in Belarus for many years to come. So we have decided to offer our Russian-speaking viewers a special Russian-language version of our online service. The year 2014 brought new challenges to Bielsat. We have been reporting on the events in Ukraine from the beginning of the Maidan protests through the annexation of Crimea to the war against separatists in the eastern part of the country. It has been many hours of live on-site reporting, but also several films. They can be seen, in English too, on bielsat.eu. Bielsat's objective is clear, to move the entire editorial office to Minsk. Of course, for the time being, this is impossible. Some of us, including myself, cannot even obtain a simple Belarusian tourist visa. And many of our collaborators are political refugees. They could face repressions after crossing into Belarus. But all this will change. How many of our predecessors, journalists at Radio Free Europe or The Voice of America, would have believed 30 years ago if someone told them that the Berlin Wall was going to fall in the near future? Belarusians dream of freedom. That dream, just like a satellite television signal, cannot be turned off or suppressed by the regime.